So street photography in the summer usually yields good results. You got the weather on your side for the most part. Um, the sun is shining more days than not. And uh, you just have longer days, so more opportunities to shoot. So this July was no different for me. I was out a lot. Um, I felt like I didn't think too much, I was just shooting. So in the end, I feel like I got a lot of images that I was really proud of. And of course it came from thinking less, trying new things, new subjects, sticking around to my locations just a little bit longer. And of course, a little bit of luck on your side never hurt. So I wanna take this time to share some of those photos with you in Lightroom. They're already edited, nothing to it more than sharing and enjoying the process, uh, which I think we all should do sometimes. But I do love the idea of just getting out and making the most of my time um, creating images that I'm proud of. So let's go. Okay, so we're in Lightroom right now. Uh, again, I have already edited these photos. These are like my favorites or ones that I'm really proud of and maybe over time I'll narrow them down. All right, so we'll start off with this one right here. Classic, putting yourself in traffic. Have you ever put yourself in traffic? GPS said turn right and I said, well, I know another way. So I went left and I thought I could cut down and save some time and literally stuck in an extra 15 minutes of traffic because of that idiotic move. However, while I was sitting in traffic in this underpass, I saw these clouds. I didn't find them, they were already there. And so uh, I thought, man, this is beautiful. I had my, uh, my GR2 with me. And so out of the driver's side window, I literally snapped this off and I thought it was a pretty, pretty nice photo. See, I knew from looking at the actual underpass it was all shadows, right? So that classic frame within a frame and then the clouds being white and chunky uh, because the sun was hitting just the one side. It just was calling for that silhouette type vibe. To me, sometimes you just know that it's gonna be black and white from the jump and I didn't really do too much editing to it. Again, it's not about the edits, more about the little stories behind it. And so I was just happy that I had my camera with me on hand so I could grab this photo. So let's move on to another one here. If you don't know, a couple of uh, videos I've been talking about my personal project, which is one of the few personal projects that I'm doing called Chasing Baskets. And so I'm always on the lookout no matter where I'm going uh, for rims, uh, basketball courts, unique angles, whatever. There's so many factors to it, but I always want to document something that feels like my teenage years, my childhood. The sun is actually behind the rim here, which was pretty cool. It just gives it that halo, kind of like that angelic uh, aura around this rim. So to me, that was more than enough to like document. And I actually love this, you know, just that one hanging chain. I mean, that just, that in itself brings me back. And uh, yeah, I would just play all the time whenever I could find time. Again, going out and shooting and just kind of stumbling on this uh, rim. And I love that the trees are just a little bit blurred out, uh, enough to keep the focus on the rim. So again, proud of this moment. Now let's move on to something that I don't normally shoot that I ended up shooting, which is this car right here. Uh, I am not into shooting cars like that but I am sh into shooting subjects that uh, intrigue me or spark something in me to document. And that's what this car did. And it wasn't so much the car, cause it's beautiful on its own. I don't even know the name, what's this called? A Bel Air, okay? So that was cool. It takes you back to a time that is not like this time here. So cars were all, you know, shaped like this. It looks like there's just way more detail. So I appreciated that. But it was, for me, it was the sky kind of connecting with the actual car. And so I find that when I shoot something that I really like or I'm really into the composition and the lighting was nice, I'll take a few other snaps and that's exactly what I did. Here's one in black and white. I kind of wish these two cars weren't here. See, I kind of follow the lines here a bit, which helps tell the story. These are three images, so I must have really liked what I saw. To in, in order for me to take three images. And I think that's a big part of it. If you like something, stick around, take a few more shots. And I have one more example like that that I'm gonna share in a little bit. Okay, so this one was interesting. Uh, I was out in Hamilton shooting for the day and I was just driving down a street and it was a red light. So I'm just looking out of my window and 
this house was like kind of looking gritty. So I saw that, that was cool. And then I saw, of course, this uh, RV that looks like it's kind of out of commission right now. But for me, it was the tree, the tree waving in the wind. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna take this and I don't want it to be about the colors again. Sometimes you just know when uh, an image should be black and white and I felt like that's what this one uh, was asking for. So I, I just took that photo, pulled my highlights down, the sky came out a bit, but I felt like I kind of fluked it out and I haven't really taken an image like this so I was pretty proud of that. Overall, I was pretty happy with the composition. So snapped it, kept it moving, I didn't even have to leave the car, which man, sometimes that's just a bonus. Yes, okay, so now I'm gonna play a sequence of images or show you a sequence of images. Um, I was shooting, it was a sunset, and um, here is the original one. Let's go with this one here first to start it off. And so this image here, pretty proud of this image here. Um, it was sunset and there was some hues. I exaggerated the hues in Lightroom a bit, but the, um, the purples and the pinks, the yellows, they were all there, they were all beautiful. So I had this image and I said, man, I'm so used to, in street photography, a lot of times you snap and then you keep it moving. But just trying to practice what I preach um, to stick around and that's exactly what I did with these images. So here is a, um, a sequence of images from this location. No tripod, I was across the street. So you can see I just stuck around in the same location. The edit's pretty much the same and just hoped to see what I could get. Some were in focus, some weren't, but overall it just felt good. Like this image here, I would have loved if I had gotten the tower in. See the tower is here, but I missed it. But it didn't discourage me, I stuck around still. Um, and I took a few more. Again, a little bit of a slow shutter, maybe one one thirtieth. Um, I can't really remember. Let's see if they have it here. One tenth of a second, okay. Again, you can see the tower, a few lights blurring. It just took me back to 1980 something. It felt beautiful. It was a lovely night out and I wanted to be present while also capturing some dope photos. Here's another one. I feel like this edit's just a touch lighter than the other ones. And I don't know why, maybe I'll have to go back and tweak one one fifteenth of a second. But yeah, overall I, I liked this. This is one of my favorites. I got like a motorcycle rider just kind of going by. I don't know if it's a motorcycle or if it's a uh, moped, don't get mad, a Vespa or something. With all the, the mood and then keeping the shutter speed slow, um, you get that motion and it's still vintage. And you got the city in the background. Can't really ask for much more from this. And I did a couple more. See here, I got the CN Tower. So that was kind of cool. You zoom in here, it's kind of grainy. But again, this is like a JPEG. I shot these in RAW. So this is a JPEG, um, just so that I could show you guys. And one more here, yeah, this is another one shot at one tenth of a second. Loved it, just loved the story, so I, I stuck to it. What's the point? Well, here's my last one here. This is gonna go in my Chasing Baskets personal project. Uh, again, loving everything that I felt here. Well, let me get this ready, okay. Yeah, again, loved the composition. Um, Again, the slow shutter speed. Let's see where we're at here. One eighth of a second. I purposely moved my hand. I just wanted to see what the camera would do. Worst case is you have a crappy photo and I didn't think this was crappy. This gave me a feeling and that's what I'm in search of. Feel. The edit is a bonus. Anything else is gonna be a bonus, but overall it's just about the feel. And I think I executed with that. So again, just because I stayed at that location for a little while, I was able to bang off some shots. This photo was so inspiring to me when I came back and looked at it later that I put it on my website and I wanna sell it as a print. So I'll do a little bit of cropping and a little finishing, touching up a bit. So I shot all those photos over the month, but then I actually got more benefit out of it and the photo lives on because I'm gonna use it on my website. and. Um, I didn't know that at the time, I was just taking pictures, but this kind of epitomized uh, my point of view of the city right now. I'm like kind of on the outside looking in at this city that keeps growing and growing and growing. Okay, so let's go through one or two more really quickly. Maybe this one, this is a beautiful moment. I love this photo strictly for the colors. The composition is nice. I love the, the point of view. 
beautiful colors and I love the shawl that she's wearing. I think it's called a shawl. Of course, I'm in uh, Kensington Market, which is all full of color, vibrance, energy, good energy, and tons of colors. So that uh, was one of my favorites as well. The subject, I love that I can't see her face, but we can think about where she's going um, what was her personality? And I think that helps tell a story through mystery, right? We can wonder and guess and see if we've been down the street like that. Do we know somebody like that? So there was a lot of um, questions that I left open for anybody who's viewing this to, uh, you know, take in for themselves and, and come to their own conclusions. So I hope you love those images. Let's uh, wrap it up. Uh, yeah, July was a good month. Thank you for taking some time to check out these images with me. Okay, so there you have it. Some of my favorite images from July 2022. I'm just happy and proud of those images and I wanted you to uh, experience them with me or some of my favorites. But let me know in the comments which ones you liked, what you gravitated to and you know what you're doing with your shots. Have you shot a lot over the summer? Have you been able to get out, challenge yourself, express yourself? Let me know in the comments. And I was just thinking, it's really important from time to time that we share our work. This is nothing that you haven't heard before, but it's good to remind each other of that. Now, what is sharing your work? Well, it could be on your website, it could be on video, it could be on social, or just with one or two of your friends, somebody aside from just looking at it on your phone or keeping it on your hard drive. I think when we share, we can disconnect from it and uh, move on mentally and, and that way we can get onto newer photos, uh, creating new compositions, move on to new projects, all because we documented what we really liked and then we shared it with the world. So that's just my two cents. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed that video and um, I hope this encourages you or inspires you to share more of your work because I think at the end of the day, really that's what it is, right? We document something that we love and then we share that with others. So anyways, until the next video, stay creative and believe in yourself. Peace.